San Juan Regional Medical Center is your community hospital, committed to making life better for the communities we are privileged to serve. In fact, better is our mission, improving lives through personalized health and care. What matters most to our patients matters most to us. Offering a comprehensive range of inpatient, outpatient, and emergency care services so you can get the quality care you need right here at home. San Juan Regional Medical Center, celebrating life better here since 1910. Fireworks will light up the Farmington sky during Freedom Days on Sunday, July 3rd. Thanks to Platinum sponsors Citizens Bank and Farmington Taco Bell and Gold sponsors Pesco, San Juan County and County Commissioners, Northern Edge Casino, Mesa Sand and Gravel, and Cooper Fire Protection. This regional crowd favorite starts at 9.25 p.m. from Sullivan Hill. Find out more at FarmingtonNM.org for a complete schedule of Freedom Day's events and details. Eleven minutes past eight o'clock. It is Tuesday morning, the twenty-eighth day of June, twenty twenty-two. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin, and thank you for tuning in to KSJE ninety point nine FM over the air, of course, here in San Juan County, New Mexico. Streaming everywhere else from our website, ksje.com, and coming soon, we'll be back on the air in Durango at one hundred three point three FM. So, as we say in this business, stay tuned, everybody, for that. Welcome also to our viewers who are joining us this morning. The video is streaming live this morning to the KSJE Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter account. So we're glad that you are with us this morning, everybody, as well, because coming up in the next few moments, we're going to be talking about Senecor, the uh, addiction recovery company. They have taken over four wins, and we'll talk a little bit about that and what that means for the local community and much, much more. That conversation in the next few moments right here on KSJE this morning. Later on this hour, I'll be checking in with Amber. Francisco from the Farmington Regional Animal Shelter. She'll be sharing with us some of the pets available for adoption this week, including Quentin. That is the dog you see on the screen right there. He is ready to go. So we'll learn more about him coming up this morning on KSJE. Next hour, Mick Hess will be here roving with the arts. It is our classical music program, of course. Mick is featuring music again today from Bach. More of his Brandenburg concertos. You heard some of those yesterday. He will complete those today. You'll hear it coming up today at 9.06 on KSJE. E. Don't forget, we also invite you to connect with us on our Instagram page in addition to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And if you're a podcast person, we remind you that KSJE podcasts are available for free wherever you listen to podcasts. So subscribe and check it out. There may be a program you haven't heard yet, and you can find them on iTunes and Spotify and iHeart and Google Podcasts. Pandora, and the list goes on and on and on. So uh, check it out and subscribe and, uh, and take us with you, of course, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, outside our studios this morning here at San Juan College, it is a beautiful sunny morning so far. Here is the scene from our recently reinstalled weather cam here at San Juan College. You can check it out, a 24-hour view of the college anytime, day or night. Outside sunshine, 66 degrees at the moment, and we are expecting a mostly sunny, warmer, and drier day day today. Today's forecast calls for a high of 86 in Farmington this afternoon. Partly cloudy overnight tonight with a low near 60. Partly cloudy tomorrow with a high near 89 on Wednesday and maybe another chance of showers beginning Wednesday night. And then showers in the forecast again, possibly on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and early next week with highs, as you can see, mostly in the lower to mid 80s and overnight lows in the mid to lower 60s. Well, let me introduce my guest who is here with me this morning, as I mentioned, to talk about Senecor. She is is the uh, director of the facility director of Senecor Farmington. Jolene Schneider is here. Good morning, and thank you for coming in this morning. Good morning, Scott. I'm happy to be here. Good to have you here. And uh, we have to talk a little bit about Four Winds, and then we'll move on to, to Senecor. But of course, um, Four Winds Recovery Center was the name of the facility here for a very long time. And in May, there was a ribbon cutting, and Senecor announced that uh, that they were now going to be running that facility. Yes, Four Winds was established in 1978 and served clients continuously for 44 years. And, um, you know, we believe we provided a very valuable service to this community and to our clients. We had hundreds, of, well, 100,000 basically in the 44 years. Um, we 
provided detox at one time. We provided outpatient services, residential. And really, I got a call from Mr. Bill Bailey, who's the president of Cinecor, in about December of 2019. And we started talking. And he shared with me Cinecor's philosophy, Cinecor's mission and values, and an interest in moving to New Mexico. And then COVID came. Right. Yes. <laughs> and, and that kind of, um, you know. Changed a lot of things. It changed a lot of yeah. things, a lot of perspectives. Right. But also the landscape was changing for funding and the way services were provided. And really as much as Four Winds had done for this community, it became fairly clear that financially we weren't going to survive for probably another two to three years. Um, and Mr. Bailey and I continued to meet. I went to Houston. I toured uh, a facility there, spent some time at the corporate office, and really felt that Cinecor shared so much of our philosophy, our values, and our mission, our concern for the client, number one, in our community. Very good. And they, and I was going to say, too, for much of that 44 years, if not all of it, right, Four Winds worked, um, operated as a nonprofit. Yes, always. And so that has its own challenges when it comes to funding and grants and, and things along that line, as, as you well know. Very much so. And, and when we moved to Medicaid with the expansion, we had, you know, prior gotten state funding and the state really directed everyone to become a Medicaid provider. And that in itself was a daunting process that, that took four wins probably about eight months. Right. before we could even um, get to that point and still struggling to work with all of the managed care organizations and it just it, everything had changed and Cinecor has resources they have a, a verification benefits department they have a billing department I mean they have so many resources we were very humble we had three people in our administrative staff so we had a biller we had an HR and payables we had me um, every dime that came back into the facility went for salaries and providing services because that's what mattered most. Right. Sure. And it's kind of that economies of scale, I suppose, too, right? Yes. And as you were telling me, Senecor is based in Texas, has a lot of facilities in Texas. This is the first now in New Mexico, in Farmington. And so they are looking maybe at expanding um, elsewhere in our state, maybe other states as, as well. But um, as you mentioned, the reason that you kind of began kind of um, having conversations with them is because their their mission seemed to match a lot of what Four Winds had been had been doing in the community for 44 years. Yes, very much so. Very good. Well, uh, well talk to me about then Senecor, as we mentioned. So May, there's a ribbon cutting, and um, and so you are now part of Senecor, and you are the um, facilities director here in Farmington. Yes. Of Senecor Farmington, and the mission continues and the work continues correct there was probably not really a, any stop or anything there's really not no change we the, change the name we changed names we had a transition really at midnight on um june 1. Uh -huh. may 1 i'm sorry may 1st may okay. 1st yes and the ribbon cutting um later that month that's right but essentially it was about just changing um, our client records into a new system but nothing nothing changed uh, in, in terms of the people being served if anything it's made it uh, a little more accessible Cinecor has an access center and when people are seeking treatment they contact that access center they do a pre-screening and they put them right on the schedule for admission some of them are in within 24 hours which is amazing, right? It, it really is. It's not something we were able to do before. Right, right. And there's a 800 number too, right? If folks are yes. seeking help that they can call any any time. And that's also, is that, I don't think you were able to do that either, were you? Or oh, never. have someone on call for 24 hours a not day? Not at all. And this access center is 24-7, yeah. 65. Uh, the number is 1-888-236-4567. Okay. And the access center is headquartered in the corporate facility in Houston. But again, it's staffed 24-7. Um, they will talk to people. They will talk to your family. If, you know, if someone's not quite ready and the family wants to call, they'll talk to them. But really, they get that information. They get that person scheduled on our schedule, and that person can be in our facility within a matter of hours. Right. And, and so the, the work that, that you've been doing 
continues. And so just remind us a bit about what what services are available at Seneca or Farmington now, uh, similar to what was available before, but just under this new yes. this new name and maybe with a few more resources that you were able to offer before. Definitely. We are currently providing short-term intensive residential substance use treatment for adults. And that is, you know, the traditional 30-day stay. We also do provide 90-day for uh, clients on United States probation. We have a contract. However, there's, there's much more in the works. Right. We are going to reestablish intensive outpatient. One of the first things we want to do is start providing MAP treatment because we understand how difficult it is for people who are involved with opioids to be able to get into recovery. And, and our next really primary goal is to open a medi medically assisted withdrawal management program. And that program will be a place for someone who, and, and alcohol as well, but someone who's using opioids or alcohol to come in and essentially medically detox and prepare for the next stage which right. could be residential could be iop really depending on you know where they're at and what their needs are and we are ready to go with that as soon as we hire some nurses oh. well there you go and there's a shortage isn't there it's there a, is a shortage so that's you're in the same boat as everybody else it sounds we like. are however we are extremely flexible okay we are doing a sign-on bonus we are doing part-time full-time if somebody wants to work one day a week that's okay okay you'll talk to them we'll talk to them okay it doesn't matter five days a week one day a week 12-hour shift whatever they need if they're already working and they just want to do something to make a little extra money call you call me okay go to my website uh, the senecor.org okay um, look at careers and that's the best way to reach out. I that guess, is right? the best to, way to get the get the application process going, or yes. doesn't send an email to say I want like more information about your nursing position yes, or definitely. whatever. Right? Definitely. Okay. Very good. My guest this morning, Jolene Schneider, is with me. She is the facility director of Senecor Farmington, formerly known as the Four Winds Recovery Center here in Farmington. The work uh, continues for recovery, and this is a really important job that you all do and that you have been doing for decades now um, in our community because we know just how invasive some of these addictions are and uh, and how difficult it is maybe for people to realize they need help and to take that first step to maybe reach out and call somebody or have a family member call somebody and uh, and show up at your door right i mean this yes. is a big deal yes it is and it is accessible we are there and, and when someone comes in you know the services provided are <sighs> Numerous, mm -hmm. numerous. I mean, clients, you know, they're assigned a counselor. They do group therapy. They do psychoeducation. They do alternative activities. They do some spiritual work. And about 70% of my staff is Native American, which is fantastic because about at least 60% of my clients are Native American. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on expanding some of those services as well. Our uh, next step with that, we are building a sweat lodge and we will be building a Hogan and we will be working with traditional healers to help us with those services. Very good. And that's really important, I think, to have culturally um, sensitive and culturally relevant treatments, right, for yes. folks that are coming to, to seek out that treatment. It right? is very important. And that's, that's a good thing. Um, talk to me a little bit about, and so we're talking mostly about um, addictions to alcohol? Alcohol, opioids, methamphetamine, and right. you know, we we can treat at the moment we can treat any substance addiction. Okay. What we can't do at this point is the medication withdrawal. That's different. Until we get those nurses. Gotcha. We have a medical director. I do have a full time RN as a nurse manager and I have one part time RN. But I really need 24-hour care in order to deal with those medications. Right. And mo and for the most part it's a thirty day for the most part, it is. Treatment. We go through, you know, the the authorization process, which is so much simpler now that Cinecor does it. Right, right. <laughs> um, they, you know, they have their department. And you know, most of the time, we get at least 14 days, but sometimes we get 30 right off the bat. Um, and, and then, you know, we will, through our, our services, through the, the counselors work with the client and our documentation, um, be able to justify and show why this person needs to stay longer. So we really haven't had any issues with anybody 
being approved for less than a month. Gotcha. And um, and that is a pretty good time frame to at least start that. It, it is. It is just the beginning. Addiction, right? Because it takes a while. I think. It I does. think probably more than thirty days in many oh, cases. Oh, much more. Much more. And so, what is um, just as important as what happens in the thirty days is what happens day 31 and that's why we have a case manager who is actively involved in not only working with the insurance companies care managers but also other providers here in the community so that when the client leaves our program they have somewhere to go to get continued counseling to go to 12-step meetings medical care mental health care whatever they need. We do provide limited mental health uh, medication management and evaluation. We have a, a contract with a psych nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to address some of those issues. But really at this point, referral is the most important part of what happens when a client completes our program. Right, and to maintain, I guess, some of that support Yes. beyond that 30 days that you can provide right and once we get our IOP back in operation we will be able to you know in theory have a client withdrawal management move them to residential step them down to IOP now explain what IOP means IOP I don't is know intensive them. outpatient treatment okay and it generally is three hours a day three times a week and then an individual session every other week for at least 12 weeks I see. And then once the person has completed that, they step down to an outpatient, which is 90 minutes a week for 24, 24 weeks. So really, that gives us the opportunity to engage with the client for nearly a year. And the longer that a client is engaged in services, the better outcome, the better opportunity that they are going to maintain. Right. And uh, as and we've been talking that this takes, I mean, it it's a, it really is a commitment. It needs to be a commitment from both the, your client and and you um, to work with them, right? Yes, very much so. And and you know, so we have the philosophy that it doesn't matter what led the client to our door. What matters is what happens when they're in the program. And so there's no, you know, it's it's not um, judging. You know, I can tell you that the majority of our clients do come from the legal system. Uh, doesn't matter to us because it really is about the changes they make. We have had some extremely successful outcomes with people who walked in the door and did not want to be there. Right. And that was going to be my next question was success stories and, and people that maybe have really made a big turnaround and maybe some of the, the reactions that you get from family or friends or even from them themselves who say, I don't want to be here, but I guess thank you or something whatever they tell you right, I don't know right, right? how do well, they turn that around and they really much do it you see it the first week there's always that um, adjustment yeah and for one you know it's it's um, a new environment and other people around that they don't know rules which they're not Just always do, accustomed maybe. to yeah, exactly right. and then having to focus on themselves we try to remove as many distractions as possible a lot with the homework and assignments and the groups that we do and it's just amazing by the end of their treatment experience they're you know thanking us they're you know wanting to shake our hands we get thank you cards from families you know we get calls from families thanking us uh, it, it's just a great thing you know reality is that's not everybody sure but if we can at least plant the seed, if the client has enough opportunity in the program to know what recovery is about, you would be surprised a number of them do come back. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe six months later, maybe a couple years later, but they got just enough of a taste of what it could be like that they want it and they come back. On their own. Maybe. On their own. That's gotta be significant. It, it's it's great uh, I have to tell you I mean that's really why I think all of us do what we do um, I was just uh, cleaning out a desk the other day and I found uh, a picture of my first client who has now been sober about 28 years How about that so you know it's like wow you know and he went on to be extremely successful he did some teaching here at the college um, he recently retired from a very good career he's got a great family 
Uh, and, and it's those, those kind of things. And whenever you start to think, oh, my gosh, why am I doing this? You remember that. Right. That story to me sounds life-changing. Very much From the so. work that you do. Very much so. And, and it's not, you know, it's not all easy, but it's extremely rewarding. We, it, you know, work with people who have been through a great deal. Probably the majority of the people who walk in our door have experienced trauma at some point. And it's just all about meeting them where they're at, accepting them, but also helping them have the courage to do the inventory, to make the changes, right. and to move forward. I think many of us would be amazed at what people have been through in their lives, the trauma, the, the whatever it is, and, and, and why maybe they, they are the way that they are. But again, you meet them where they are, and then yes. you can kind of provide those services. Of, and and I sh I'm sure every client is different when they present to you. And so each treatment plan is probably a little different too. Very much so. As to how you get them out of that place where they are when they are, show up at your door. Yes, and we've had the uh, wonderful experience of having a licensed clinical social worker working with us who is certified in EMDR, which is, you know, a practice with people with PTSD and other right. traumas. And that's been very helpful so that we're able to kind of do the integrated versus a parallel or, you know, sending somebody out somewhere else for care. It just makes it... I think easier for the client because they're in one facility, they've formed these relationships, and it, it gives them that sense of connection. Right. Let me ask you a bit about these clients that show up and maybe they realize it themselves or maybe their family has kind of strongly suggested that they come and see you, um, but is there any advice you have maybe for a family or friend? Of you know because maybe maybe many times folks are fairly functional yes. despite their addiction um, and so it's maybe hard to kind of tell that there's a problem um, when we meet them or interact with them right. and so what would you what advice would you say so you know I think some of the um, signs are not always easy to see and and I think sometimes if it's someone in your family or someone that you're very close to you tend to overlook or try to overlook. But, you know, there's things like moodiness. Um, there's things like maybe money spent that there's no explanation. Um, being late, you know, not coming home. And it's, it's a difficult place to be as a family member or a friend of somebody. Because, you know, that person really does know that there's something going on with them. And, and they need to do something different. But it's very difficult when you confront them the first, you know, um, instinct is to become defensive and to deny. And really, I think the biggest thing is to communicate to the person your concern, your care, and options. Ultimately, that person has to make the decision. You know, the family can give someone an ultimatum and they can come into treatment but if they really do not want to stop, they're probably not going to do it. Right. The family needs to take care of themselves and the friends. There's programs like Al-Anon sure. that are very helpful in helping family members or loved ones learn to take care of themselves. And it doesn't mean that you don't love the person with the addiction issue. It just means that you're taking care of yourself. Because the reality is if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of anybody else. Right. And, and no one human being is going to keep another human being sober. Good point as well. And I think we learned a little bit about that during the pandemic. Yes. If you don't get, take care of yourself, you can't take care of your family or the others that depend on you, with that kind of a thing as exactly. well. Exactly. And so that is certainly certainly good advice. And so and since you really deal with adult treatment, right? And so and that's why they really have to be willing to come there and 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 stay there and yes. and and be treated, right, for the thirty days or whatever it is. We are not a locked facility, so anyone is free to walk away anytime they choose to. I'm always with the awareness that if they happen to have a probation officer, we will ah, contact them and no, let them are, know. There are, yeah, those things happen, right? It's you know, it's choices, and and maybe it's choosing between two things you don't want to do, but it's still a choice. Sure. And, and you need to make that choice and do what's right for you. Um, you know, I had somebody who walked away and didn't even get to the end of the road and was like, whoops. 
rethought so, something yes and so you know they're welcome back okay there's very few things that would keep us from taking somebody back right right but there are certainly choices of consequences some positive yes. some negative and i guess that's yes. what they learn a little bit too and some of them will do that some of them will end up being remanded and spending some time incarcerated and then they'll come back to us okay and and while we are mindful of that when they come back each experience is a new experience we want to give them that opportunity and not hold it against them as far as their behavior in the past we recently had a, a young lady who was involved with federal probation she had been in our program last year and she left after three weeks at i believe our request there were some issues she came back and she successfully completed 90 days she made it through that that rough first week but she did fantastic has an excellent plan uh, in her home community and just a, just a huge change and and it really was about her being ready but at the same time when someone walks in the door they need to feel welcome they need to feel like they belong they need to feel that they're not being judged and that it's a safe place for them to do the work they need to do right well and i suppose if they're walking through your door for the second time or the third time it's important for them to know that the slate is kind of wiped clean and that they are you you accept them as they are you yes. said that at the very beginning of our conversation today that uh, it sounds like you know you just work with what you get exactly as they when exactly. they when they show up and and you never know i mean some people come in and you know they, they used to call it rehabilitation right um and some people come into our facility and it's not even rehabilitation it's habilitation because they never learn some of these skills to begin with we, we really have to keep in mind where someone is coming from you know what was their family life like what you know I, i've had um folks in the program that don't know how to use a washing machine mm -hmm. because they never did right and and it's those right. simple things and and we incorporate simple chores ways to help them become more responsible really with the end goal of at some point this person is going to have a job or be going to school and so we help them to learn how to be on time what's the appropriate way to behave and and it's so much more than just not drinking or using and, and i think really that's um part of Senecor's well beyond recovery because it's not just about not drinking and using right and that i guess helps them once they complete the program yes and and again that aftercare i guess too which is so important to get them back on maybe not maybe they've never been on their feet but back on yes on, on their feet and and self-supportive and holding down a job and being responsible and contributing to society and all these things that I think we kind of take for granted, but a lot of these folks struggle with if they've never been able to taught how to do it or, or learned how to do it or all those things. Yes. And, and we work very much with um, our case manager, very much with uh, Department of Workforce Solutions, um, connecting also with uh, Goodwill has a mm -hmm. job program. And, it, you know, it's just where are our clients at? Do they need to know what a resume even is or how to fill out an application? Or do they have some skills and they just need connected? We also take them to job fairs occasionally. We took uh, some clients to a job fair in May. No, it was April. I'm sorry, the end of April. Mm -hmm. And one of them secured a very good job for when he was discharged. Good. So, you know, you never know. And, and that's really important in the community as well if employers are willing to work with people. I know Cinecor is a second chance employer. employer. And, you know, I think understanding that people have experiences and yes, they have had some things happen in their past, but they are not their past. Right. And looking at who are they today and giving them a chance. Um, certainly holding them accountable for their behavior, but giving everybody the opportunity to be successful. Sure. And for your clients, does seeing some of those positive things coming through after their treatment, that's hopefully does that reinforce maybe that they're on the right path and, and they really need Very to stick so. with what they're what they're doing and not fall back into those bad habits? It does. And you know, and also if somebody does fall back for just a brief moment, it gives them the opportunity to learn 
from what happened. You know, relapse is sometimes a part of what happens in recovery. And it's really, it's not to be ashamed of. It's to learn from. And if someone relapses, and yes, maybe they lose their sobriety date, they did not lose the skills. They did not lose the things they learned. And it's just about getting back up and moving forward, not getting stuck. Good message, I think, for everyone to hear this morning. And uh, Jolene Schneider, we're out of time. Would you repeat that 800 number one more yes. time for us for folks who maybe want to reach out or maybe share it with somebody or someone that they care about? What What's the number? Again? Certainly. And this is the Cinecor Access Center, and it is 1-888-236-4567. Very good. Jolene Schneider, the Facility Director for Senecor Farmington. Thank you for coming in this thank morning. Thank you for having me, Scott. You bet. Great to see you. And thank you for the work that you've been doing for a while now in our community. We appreciate it. It's worth every minute. Thank you very much. You. Back with more in just a moment, everyone. This is KSJE. KSJE is supported by the Alzheimer's Association, New Mexico Chapter, with a local office in Farmington, providing free services and resources to help those living with dementia and their families, including their 24-7 helpline, 1-800-272-3900. The Alzheimer's Association, New Mexico Chapter, 1-800-272-3900. KSJE and San Juan College present the Student Success Coaching Tip of the Week. Hello again, this is Emin Chi with Week 4 Coaching Tips over the radio. For Week 4, we will be discussing resources. There are many resources available on our college campus, both physically and online. Be sure to know these valuable resources. If you are unsure of their availability, do an online research using your college website. If you cannot find the resources on your own, be sure to contact the Student Achievement Center in room 1604. Resources can be found in the following areas. Library Services, Native American Center, Herencia Latina Center, Student Achievement Center, Career Center, Trio Center, Tutoring Center, Veteran Center, Financial Aid Office, Advising and Counseling Center, Disability Services, Business Office, Dean of Students, and much more. The Student Success Coaching Tip of the Week, presented by KSJE and the Student Achievement Center at San Juan College. Are you looking for a career in education, school transportation, student nutrition, or grounds and maintenance? The Bloomfield School District has competitive wages, benefits including paid vacation, sick leave, paid holidays, and a retirement package. Find out more about all the available positions online or from Mike Sturdivant at 505-632-4326. Bloomfield School District, investing in our future. Bloomfield School District is an equal opportunity employer. Thank <music> you.